I'm Finn. I'm sorry. If you would like to get your song reviewed, dear listener, there's the filthy capitalist option. It's sorry, it says. 125 gets you straight to the head of the line. You don't have to be a part of Alliance. You don't have to be a part of the group. Wait a minute. And the biggest thing is you don't have to wait. You hop, skip, and jump right in front of everybody. 125 gets you there. You do that three times, and then get mashed down to the $75 rate for perpetuity. Yes! Also, there is a band review option. <laughs> so if you've got a band and you're trying to get your band some exposure, hit me up at sorry at gmail.com, and I'll show you the details about how to pull you that off. You can also jump on Patreon, and there is a option on the tiers to be able to get your band reviewed. Yep. Obviously, we can't lie to you. So we can't guarantee, can't guarantee a positive you review. A positive review. <laughs> get what you get. It's just rubbish. 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 That's British for garbage. Ah! My favorite is a community option. One dollar at the gate gets you in a Patreon. You get to join an alliance. The alliance joins their points together, and that helps determine what songs that we do. <laughs> the alliances hang out on Discord. Shh. Message me on Patreon to get the link. And they do all kinds of other cool things. They do Minecraft. What? Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, yeah. It's really a community within the community. Anybody can go on the village, facebook.com backslash Finn and Sorry. There's 160 plus thousand people on the channel. What's cool about the Discord is that it offers a real opportunity for community connection, friendship, that type of thing. But, and it's on Discord, so if you're not a Facebook person, it's for you. You start off at a dollar. Right. Plus you get exclusives. Sorry and I are working on a song. So the first 15 seconds of that was on Patreon. Also, at $15 here and above, when we actually debut the video, they're going to be there live with us. There you are, dear listener. Buy our merch. Buy our merch. Indeed. A child shall lead them. All right. Dear next listener, up you are in the middle of the uh, music, music in, the in the art stream by a, a collection of... Uh, alliances that you just heard about just now. Uh, they this decided to song. take four songs, and Soraya is going to explain to you what the deal is with this particular song. Shout out, by the way, to Kellen Dross. Kellen Dross, you didn't miss it. This is your song, Anarchy 99, Fall of a Frafra. The first one was the Cult of Luna song. You did miss that one. Glad to see you here, big homie. Okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I just had to say hi to Kellen. You know how that is. <laughs> All right. The, the, Information on this one is this was Anarchy 99's winner of the Cross Alliance Music in the Arts Tournament. This song was inspired by Richard, Richard Adams' novel Watership Down. Watership Down is about a group of rabbits looking for a new warren to live when one of them gets a vision that danger will come to their current warren. Ephrafa is the current warren. The group manages to escape and encounter dangers and adventures on the search for a new warren. Upon finding an ideal spot, they realize they need female rabbits in order to establish the oh, warren no. and must return to Ephrafa to bring some with them. This leads to a clash with the more brutal leaders of the warren. Those leaders are ultimately defeated and unity between Ephrafa, the new warren, and a third warren between the two is formed. And that, dear listener, is what you will be listening to. That's some context. Shout out to uh, Anarchy ninety nine. Anarchy ninety nine. Brought us this and pick. And now here it is: the fall of a fra fa. Uh, what is it? Something down. What do we call it again? It's literally the. F Fall of Ephrafa is the name of the band, and the fall of Ephrafa is the name of the song. All right, dear listener, and go.
fields are covered with blood. As long as that on the record. Second to last one. That it's still going? Uh, it's like raindrops. I yeah. Think. <clears throat> you know what's interesting? Hmm? Uh, it's like a fire. I I guess this this whole book and everything came about because they would take these long car car rides. The author. And he would make up the story off the top of his head to his kids. <laughs> really? His do- his do- particularly his daughters. And his daughters made him write it down in a book. Oh, that's adorable. So, well, it's interesting because he says, look, um, I, I, um, I, I didn't mean this book to be an allegory or whatever. I, I didn't mean it to be anything other than just... Telling what- a story in the car. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, that's that, all. I, all I cared about was was uh, my daughter and the guard. Like, I almost feel bad saying that because I feel like because a lot of people. Yeah, so it, Richard Adams told his daughters Juliet and Rosamund this story, and that's pretty much it. That's 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 what he was doing. He wasn't trying to come up with a so a giant metaphor for um, for the world or anything like that. That's so interesting. And my uh, my cousin used to do that. He would tell us stories about Timmy the turtle. Well, he really would tell his sister. He was her big he, her big brother. He would tell yeah. her about Timmy the turtle. Adams explained that he meant the book to be only a made up story and no sense in allegory or parable of any kind of political myth. Oh. I simply wrote down a story I told to my little girls. Well. So, I mean... I guess that means you're really super freaking brilliant if you can just write something off the top of your dome and it has implications. Well, see... And then you think to yourself, yeah, bro, that was your intention. But subconsciously... Yep. Are there themes to this story... Yep. That, you, you know, because it's like... I remember one time, you know... Me, me, because me and my my buddy, we were gonna be original, so we're gonna write. We were gonna write music, and it was gonna be original. So mm -hmm. we were hanging out in Central Park talking about this, and there was this girl who was an artist, and uh, she said, she said, "Oh, you're gonna you're gonna make an instrument we've never heard before," and I said, "I said no, we're in a band. I play guitar. He he he's a singer." She's like, "Well, then how can you be original?" You didn't make up the guitar. And now, obviously, now, when I look back at it, we thought Korn was this giant, original, groundbreaking band. And they were. They, they broke ground. But when I listen to Tony Iommi, mm -hmm. I say, well, wait a second. There's some similarities. Not only is it this band or this riff, like, there's a whole genre this guy inspired that you yeah. picked up your guitar and you were just, I do it all the time. Like, I'm, I'm just, I'm just dilly-dallying, but, oh, I'm, I'm in major scale. Why am I major scale? Well, because that's the first thing that Sean taught me mm -hmm. was major scale. So all the shit I do when I want to do solos or whatever, it's all major scales or a broken up major scale. Like our song is, mm -hmm. you know, da -da. yeah, I can show you that drill. Like, so I understand like his intention, right? But like, just like it's not my intention to like rip off of, well, no, I do intentionally rip off people. I said it yesterday. <laughs> you said, I was going to say you said it yesterday. But, but most of us as guitarists in general don't intend to rip off anybody. Uh -huh. We intend to play what comes from our heart. It just so happens that everything that comes from our heart sounds like all of our heroes. So I'm not sure if um, I'm not sure that you cannot, you know, make an allegory out of this. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And and even if he didn't intend to in his conscious mind. It's still, yeah. Who knows? Maybe in his subconscious mind, because for whatever reason, um, this book has really affected people. There's been plays about it. There's been cartoons about it. There's been this band apparently is dedicated to it. Um, so <laughs> it, it's a. There you go. Okay, BM fans in the house. Who who's a freaking OG? I was just talking about Marx. Oh, really? And, and, and Marxism How and all that jazz. Um, they later went on to form Lightbearer, which makes a hell of a lot of sense yeah. to me. But, but these guys, these guys, um, really, it really affected them and it affected a lot of people. Yep. And so at some level you have to say, it's really weird. Like as an artist, sometimes you, you, you kind of lose your art. Your art doesn't belong to you anymore because it's so powerful and it, it, the people kind of take it. And it, it kind of means something to them. So even if you didn't mean it for that, yep. it almost doesn't matter. Yep. Because once you put the art out there, you're the originator, but it almost doesn't belong to you anymore. It's yeah, almost I, like some some artists... Yeah, I can see that. Their their child becomes an adult and moves out of the house, if that makes any sense. <laughs> right? Yeah. Like, yeah. I always say, like, if you're a really good parent, that means you're working yourself out of a job for the most part, unless there are other extenuating circumstances. And I think if you're an artist... Maybe that's a pinnacle of art when 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 your art leaves you. Yeah, I think and it depends then on the person. Identifies with another group. I think it depends on the person. Some people don't want their stuff touched at all. They don't want you to, you know, just like like copying. 
Like when I was a kid, if somebody copied me, I was like, I did see that as the biggest form of a compliment. Um, but I was around other people that I liked to copy because I always thought that they, they did certain things very, very well. And they used to hate it when they would get copied. It was so frustrating to them. I think they wanted their stuff to be more original. This is interesting. So it, this is a thing. It's called the death of the author. When the intention of the author loses meaning compared to how others interpret it. That's a very, very yeah. fascinating yep. concept. So I, I think I think that this has this has kind of been globbed on to, especially Amy Lee's in the house, by the way. Shout out to Amy Lee. Um, a, a lot of anti-fascists, you know, Watership Down's universal motifs of liberation and self-determination have been identified with by readers from a diversity of backgrounds. The author, Rachel Kadish, reflecting on our own superimposition superimposition of the founding of Israel onto Watership Down has remarked, turns out plenty of other people have seen their histories in that book. Some people see it as an allegory for struggles against Cold War fascism, extremism, a protest against materialism, against a corporate state. Watership Down can be Ireland after the famine, Rwanda after the massacres. Kadish has praised both the fantasy genre and Watership Down for its motif that hit home in every culture. Wow. All passers-by wow. are welcome to bring their own subplots and plug it into the archetype. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I, I think, I, I think this happens with like certain certain figures that become religious leaders. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> the shit that they say, like, absolutely. yo, bro, I didn't mean. Like, obviously, yeah. it's very dangerous for me to say this because, yeah. considering everybody knows me, mm -hmm. uh, zombie holic in the house. Um, uh, greetings from Brazil. Shout out to Brazil. We had a lot of um, South Americans the last couple of days. Yeah, and, and so. The Warren gets destroyed, you know, you know, this interconnected sort of tunnel. You know, what's really interesting mm -hmm. is the movie Us. Yeah, <laughs> I thought of it a lot during the rabbits. Yeah. Yeah. Rabbits were a major theme yeah. in that in that film. And it's really interesting. I almost wonder again, like subliminally, had he read that book? Because if you're talking about self-determination, if you're yeah. talking about a Warren, because there was a labyrinth underground yes. at the in the last, second to last scene of the movie, yeah. and you could just see there was this labyrinth underground, and you had these humans, but they were kind of not human, and they were all they had to eat was rabbit, yeah. and they had to eat rabbits and over and over again. But they 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 finally Double basically gangers. wanted to break out of their shell yeah. and come above ground. Yep. So they wanted to abandon the underground and come above ground and determine for themselves their own yeah. lives because they're so... So, it, so again, it, it's just really crazy. And I listened to a lot of Jordan Peele when he talked about us because I felt like us was actually better than Get Out. I felt it was more layered than Get oh, Out. Oh, it was. Um, yeah, I, I would agree And it was also that. more terrifying than Get Out, I think. And so I was listening to... But he never mentioned this at all. He never mentioned this story. But part of me feels like, especially a guy like him, who's such a deep thinker, he must have come across the book at some level. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, and so then he writes his story, us, about people underground who are fighting for self-determination. Yeah. And, you know, these rabbits are, are kind of the archetype for that. And rabbits feature heavily in that in that movie, in Us. Yes, so it's 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 one of the more fascinating things to me about human I think that the craziest question that I've ever been asked on this one came from Ben. Okay. When Ben what said, Ben Webb said, he said, Vin, he said, he said, I'm being serious now. Do sounds uh, oh. want to be heard? Yeah. And then, you know, because it's true. Any musician knows this. Like you hear something in your head and, and then you, you, you go and you play it. And none of us thinks like, how the hell did that right. sound pop into right. my head? Where did that originate? You know what yep. I'm saying? Like oh, it's yeah. one thing where you're just fiddling around with the guitar and like and you go, Oh, I like that progression. Oh, let's, right. and then you build on it. But a lot of times, like you just hear a sound and you hear a progression that you haven't heard before. Right. And so I almost, See, that doesn't happen to me, but it happens when I write. Right. But if you were if you were a musician and if you were like on your on your guitar every day, like yeah. you know, like you're swimming in that world, it's all it's kinda yeah. almost that's always the guitar is always in the back of my head from sun up to sundown. Like, mm -hmm. You know, so, so I almost wonder, like, same thing with words or with concepts, like it, 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 which is crazy. Like, but but do these words or concepts have some sort of immaterial cognitive sort of ontology somewhere? Yeah. And then it, it basically finds the right person. And I'm not even saying God. I'm not even saying God. I'm, I'm saying 
the because I've been wrestling with that idea the entire time since mm-hmm. he said that because we were talking about Hoffman mm-hmm. and all the rest of it, and you know, Hoffman makes the argument that even rocks are conscious to a degree, mm-hmm. um, and if rocks are conscious, then sounds are simply vibrations, right? And so there is a physical component to sound. Yeah. So so there's just so many things. Where I'm like oh, I don't know. So like, did the story want to be told? You know, people talk about their muse. How does this author, he's making up, I mean, and first of all, how incredibly talented must a per- person be? <laughs> to, he was freestyling That's that shit off the top a, yeah, of his right, head. Right. <laughs> and it's like this classic book that yeah. is that is inspiring so many different things. Um, so it's just, it's just pretty crazy. A good example of the death of the author is the song Child in Time by Deep Purple. People, people often see it as an anti-war piece. In reality, the song had nothing to do with that. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Creative imagination, I guess. But the the problem is, like for me, like the, I didn't like I don't work to think of those sounds. I work to translate what I've heard in my head, yep, onto the guitar. But there's yep. a lot of times I'm doing something else, and all of a sudden the sound will come or yep. a progression will come, and then I'll either like take out his phone and then he I'll literally take my phone out and go dun 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 <laughs> yep. dun. You know what I'm saying, yeah. like. It's cute. So, so it's it's more of like translation than it is imagination. Mm-hmm. But and that doesn't happen all the time. I, I'm just it's just very very fascinating to me that people can jump on something and then claim it. And you know I think BM fan and Caleb right like it gets to the point where it's like it's no longer yours, bro. Like you're gonna get the royalties and all that, but that child, that that brain child that that was gestating within your mind and that you that you birthed through a horrible. Mm-hmm nine month process of authoring has now grown up and been yeah either kidnapped or moved out but it's gone it's no longer yours anymore i mean i see that as like the biggest like hat tip to an artist is that people were able to take their art and make it into something for themselves so i'm i'm with that all the way i do think it's important to know you know where the author was going i think that that's a good like way to hat tip the author right but simultaneously right. i think that if people take it and they just go to town with it that that that's a, a compliment for sure yeah i mean if you look at if you look at you know blood spilled on toiled grounds yeah fur will hang in rugged clumps yeah. upon the hedgerows peace is lost to us now a federal a federal ideal i mean all of this could be this could be the bolshevik revolution the american revolution you know the yeah. slave revolts it could be it could yep. be anything where you got a group of people who are forced underground to a degree and have to come out and fight for themselves and fight for their right to even exist or whatever. It could be yep. your LGBT friends. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it could be, a, you know, I mean, it, if, just if, raise if a river. Just trans women of color are dying. Like, you know, they're, they're, they're basically forced underground, societally speaking, uh. and, and clumps of them are dying in bunches, bro. And, and it just seems nobody cares. So, like, there's just so many ways you could plug this in. And I, yeah. I don't think I've ever I don't think I've ever seen something like this before. But maybe I have um, because but, we've reviewed like 2,500 songs. But you didn't have the breakdown. But so, we generally, yeah, yeah we, don't, we don't look at the we don't look at the uh, the breakdown because I don't want it to, to fuck with my um, interpretation. interpretation. But at the same time, I would have interpreted the song the same way. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um the only thing I would have done is I would not have literalized the bunnies. I would have said that the bunnies were metaphorical for whatever. Yeah. Um, but according to the author, it's not. But apparently it's not his song anymore, bro. So there's that. Uh, what, did, what did you get the song? Uh, okay. So when it first started, I loved the sound of it. And then I was like, where are the, li- the vocal style going to go? Because there's a certain vocal style that I was kind of hoping for. And then it was different than I expected. And so I was like, Meh. But then by the end, I, I really enjoyed it. It's a 9.6 for me. This is a solid, easy ten and a half for me, um, and and I and I gotta say I I'm just I'm just uh, shout out to Fernando I'm just very like taken aback about this death of the author concept. Yeah. And you know I'm gonna be that's gonna be yeah. in my head for a very thank you guys for that. And even the and way that it's, my head for yeah even the way the that, phrase yeah. is I agree poetic. I agree I agree um, because. That has a lot of implications, man. Yeah, uh, I could. You know, one of the things. You know, one of the things I got from this channel is a, and it's ironic because I'm the original sin guy, but a massive appreciation 
I have seen so much of the image of God in these bands and these people, and even, even our friends that are able to like school us with this stuff. You just see so much of like the fucking brilliancy of human beings, man. Mm -hmm. And like how truly weird the world is. Mm hmm. Oh, wait a minute. What do you mean by weird? This dude was in his car. Oh, yeah. <laughs> just trying to pass the time. And then you think about all the million counterfactuals that put him and those two girls in the car at that moment. Mm -hmm. And and what the necessities were that he was going towards or leaving. Yeah. It's just, how do you go from that to affecting people in our community so deeply that they say, this has to be heard by, mm -hmm. by Minnesori. Mm -hmm. Yeah. To... Whatever is going to happen now that it, it's just it's mind boggling to me. Human beings are amazing to me. Just absolutely, <laughs> absolutely freaking amazing what human beings are capable of doing. And then to be able to, you know, thoughts and words and books are not physical. Mm -hmm. They're not. Right. You know what I'm saying? And like to, to, to be able to grasp that and take that from the person who originated it and say it's ours now. Yep. Like, ah, like human beings are insane. It's just unbelievable. I, I just love the fuck out of human beings, bro. I just, I just love human beings, man. Like <laughs> shit is crazy. And, and that that's, I, you know, I just think that's just one of the things that God just like, yeah, you guys just, you fuck shit up. But look at this brilliance. You know, anyway, yeah, it's, it's, it. it's 10 and a half. It's unbelievable to me. Unbelievable song. Um, I, I didn't want to like dig up, too much into the lyrics because I wanted to respect the author because mm -hmm. the author was like, look, man, this is a straight up story about my daughter mm -hmm. for my daughters. It's, it's what it is. Mm -hmm. Like, so I wanted to respect that and say, okay, bro. Okay. I respect that. But at the same time, you still have to talk about the other stuff and, and the musicianship, the musicianship in the la was, was absolutely yeah. beautiful. Mm -hmm. Especially that last part. I wish, and then and then to find out that oh, of course, light bearer, of course, because mm -hmm. light bearer has those long yeah, extended yeah. interludes of really melodic, um, sort of oases in the desert type mm -hmm. situations because it's so heavy or so like you know caustic when and they have these really extended and I love that they're not they're not afraid to have these extended yep you know instrumental periods. I'll get there at some point when I'm able to add more complexity or yeah. You know, or probably when we're able to like practice more together as a band so that you can see like seven wasn't able to like hang out yesterday because he's working on his bass mm -hmm. part. So like it just it, it depends, you know. Yep. Um, OK, there you are, dear listener. If you are not a square uh, and you are in you're down with the struggle, we have more music coming your way. If not. It is what it is. We will check you out at 11 a.m. Eastern Standing Time. Having said standing time, standard time. Having said that, dear listener, Vin out. Sorry out. Gone.